live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube. Covering QuickBooks Connect 2016. Sponsored by Intuit QuickBooks. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and John Walls. So we continue our coverage here at QuickBooks Connect 2016 here on theCUBE, the flagship broadcast of SiliconANGLE TV where we extract the signal from the noise that shows all over America. And this week we are here live in San Jose along with Jeff Frick, I'm John Walls. We're now joined by Jeff Priest, who's the VP and Accountant Segment Leader at Intuit. And Rich, nice to have you with us here. Hi, thank you, appreciate you being here. We've had a great discussion about soccer, probably not the, what we're going to talk about for the next 15 minutes <laughs> or so. Uh, what I'd like to do though, if we can't kick off, is on the firm of the future. And yep. we've, we've had that concept kind of bandied about a bit, heard a little bit on the keynote stage today, but just what is that? And, and what is, uh, what's going to, or what are you doing with it in terms of Intuit to facilitate its growth? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, accountants are at the backbone of what we do at Intuit and QuickBooks. So, you know, we're very fortunate. We have 600,000 accountants who use our accountant offering for QuickBooks. So an enormous part of our ecosystem. And, you know, what we've known for a long time is there's obviously a big move to the cloud. So these are accountants that historically have used desktop products. Uh, they have billed by the hour. Uh, they haven't necessarily partnered with third-party apps. And of course, the world has changed. Um, now, you know, the, the products like uh, QuickBooks Online are in the cloud. That means that data can flow seamlessly from a client account, the bank account, back into the books. Much of the work the accountant did, frankly, has been automated. And so what we're trying to educate accountants with is, you could get left behind. If you don't make that move to the cloud, you literally will go out of business at some point. Now, as we sit here today, there's about a third of accountants that have made that move to the cloud. About two thirds still have not. So the firm of the future is all about how do I do that? You know, how do I get my clients to the cloud? How do I move my practice to the cloud? How do I work with third party apps? And so it's a little bit foreign to some accountants, some have adopted it, but, but that's the concept of the education. So what's the kicking and screaming all about then? I mean, you're talking about two thirds of, the, of, of your accountant base yep. has yet to pull the trigger on that. Yep. You know, what's the reluctance? You know, and it's, it's, it's basically, sometimes there isn't a burning platform for change. Um, or people don't feel the burning platform until it's too late. So if you think about you know, a typical accounting practice who's been around for 20 or 30 years, it has maybe 200 clients, it's very profitable. If somebody tells you you need to change your practice fundamentally, there is arguably no platform for change. You know, the average age of accountants is, is still in the early 50s. And so, you know, there is a groundswell of, you know, it won't happen to me, when the reality of it is it will happen to everybody. And so, as with anything, there are some early adopters and they see the future first and they make those changes. And I think the good news is it's starting to get to that critical mass now where you know, more and more accountants are doing it. It will soon be at that sort of 50% place. And so you know, when we talk to accountants, 76% of them say they plan to move to the cloud. So certainly I think the education has taken root. Mm -hmm. It's just about taking the steps and, and actually moving again from a desktop world to a cloud-based world. So, so what are the classic paradigms we see in, in enterprise software as more of the stuff becomes automated, moves to the cloud, especially in IT, the, 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 the comeback is, but now you can do more value-added stuff. Yes. Now you're not just keeping the lights on, now you can get involved in the business, you can be a more significant uh, person driving business value. Yep. Is, is that discussion happening That's with these guys to say, you know, you don't need to be entering receipts anymore, yeah. now you can work with your clients to talk about cash flow, to talk about growth, to talk about, you know, um, re, uh, succession planning, you know, higher value topics. Um, to recover some of that lost time that you're not doing yep. data entry. Yeah, that's, that's exactly uh, the conversation that we have, and I'll give you a couple of examples. So, you know, you're right, the data entry used to be the backbone of what the accountant would charge for, and the reality of it is, it's largely automated, and the small business owner knows that it's largely automated. So the accountant can no longer charge for the core service. So they have to move to another place where they're adding value. Now, good example would be, you know, at Intuit we have a service called QuickBooks Financing. And so we essentially have a platform where we work with lenders, and at times actually we put our own money into this as well, to lend to small businesses. Now, some need a traditional uh, APR loan, some need a line of credit. There's a whole variety of different lending tools. We try to educate the accountant so they can actually get in front of the needs of the small business to help them with managing their capital. 
that's something that an accountant historically would never have done before. So we try to give them those tools to have that conversation and it's not just about data entry. Do you ever, um, well I guess you do consider that your role as far as facilitating that, that dialogue or that relationship between the accountant on one side and, and the small business owner on the other. Um, how have you learned to be the translator in that transaction? You know, what, what have you learned from the, maybe the accountant side to help you talk to the small business folks and then vice versa over the years? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I'll, I'll answer the question by giving you a couple of stats and then, and then sharing why they're important. So 89% of small businesses say they're more successful when they work with an accountant. So nine out of 10 basically say they're more successful when they work with an accountant. And then accountants say one of the hardest things they do is find new clients. Uh, accountants will often say, you know, they're not good marketing folks, they're accountants. And so you've sort of got this, uh, this strange situation of small businesses knowing they're more successful when they find an accountant, and accountants having a hard time finding small businesses. <laughs> and so a good example of that is, we have a platform uh, which is like a matchmaking platform, it's called Find a Pro Advisor. So last year, over a million small businesses, just simply within QuickBooks, went to this platform to find a pro advisor, and several hundred thousand of them found a pro advisor, so they, we connected them to an accountant. Now, that's not good enough, and we need to lift that number up, but still, it's making those, those connections, it's finding this small business is perfect for this accountant, and putting the two together. You know, the other stat is half of all small businesses still go out of business in the first five years. Half of all restaurants go out of business in the first two years, and so again, early on, finding the small business who can work with the accountant will actually reduce the odds of going out of business as well. Hmm. And in that marketplace, um, obviously you're providing guidance in the restaurant example, probably makes sense to work with somebody that's worked in the restaurant industry before because of the unique cash flow characteristics, the unique you know, write-offs and, and another kind of tax treatment, so it's not just a blind yellow pages look exactly. or you know, I tap my buddy on the shoulder who maybe is in a completely different business. What's your guy do? Maybe, you know, maybe your guy can help me. A lot more intelligence to the process. It, it is, and that's exactly how it works. So for example, you know, we asked the accountant, what's the top five industries you support? Which third party apps do you support? What social proof do you have? And then we'll actually look at their QuickBooks files and we'll say, you know, we know that you have 30 clients already who are restaurant owners. And then for when a restaurant owner comes in and says, I'm looking for an accountant, we can use that data to target the specific accountant in their area who supports the apps that they need, who has the experience that they need. You know, even within that one segment, for example, franchises is a big thing. Some restaurants are in a franchise. You know, you think of Subway, McDonald's. Some obviously are not, they're one-off restaurants. Finding the accountant that supports the franchise, if you're in a franchise, is important. So we try to get to that level of granularity and then truly it's a, it's a client that fits the accountant and vice versa. Because th there are so many people self-employed yep. these days, right? That number's growing, I think. Um, and correct me, but there's something like 34% of the workforce, right, right. is, is uh, self-employed now and expected to grow. Yep. So if I'm an accountant and I'm looking at that, first off, great, great opportunity. So then I'm thinking, oh gosh, great headaches because their accounting or their processes, their record keeping, their bookkeeping, their tr uh, time tracking, it's just not up to snuff. So what kind of frustrations are there that are existing in, in that evolving paradigm now with the self-employed becoming a bigger part of our workforce and the accountant and then on the Intuit side, you're trying to corral them and get them organized? Yeah, and, and actually this is a really interesting one because as you mentioned, 34% of all tax returns today in the US are Schedule C, which means self-employed. So it's already a large number. Uh, by 2020, there will be 60 million, 60, 60 million self-employed folks in the US alone. So, so this is a large and growing segment. Now, when we first spoke to accountants about this a couple of years ago, they largely said, I'm not interested in this group as my clients. They said self-employed folks typically are less organized, and so these are folks that have receipts in the glove box of their car, and so they come in with a shoebox, and their willingness to pay me is relatively low. <laughs> and so, uh, disorganized, oh, they're apart they're, from that, they're, they're fantastic. Great customers. They're, they're ideal clients, <laughs> apart from that. And so that was sort of the, the, a leading perception when we spoke to accountants. Now, subsequently, we've launched a product. We have over 100,000 customers now using QuickBooks Self-Employed, which just goes to show the, uh, the excitement in that space. We asked them, is this a DIY product or are you looking for help from a professional? And much to our surprise, 75% said, I'm actually looking for some help, particularly around taxes 
for a professional. So what we've recently done, and actually we announced it at the show in the last couple of days, we've built uh, onto our QBOA, onto our accountant platform, we've built the ability for accountants to work with QuickBooks self-employed clients, and essentially what we do for the accountant is package up the tax return, and so they, uh, much of the work is done for them, and then they can help a self-employed client at a much lower cost point mm -hmm. because it's much less of their time. So the average tax return takes an accountant five and a half hours, and so we're hoping we can slash that down to a much, much smaller number, and then that accountant can work with that self-employed client for a lower number. So our dream of putting the two together is still very much in place, but sometimes it's about doing things differently so we can we can automate some of the work to drive the cost down. It's still a classic autom automation play, right? Automate so much of the record keeping on the client side, the access and the pumping of that data into the returns for the accountant side, and hopefully they can do more customers so they get, they get some more money. Exactly, versus miss out on a large and growing space, which will soon be half of all tax returns in the US at some point here in the next 10 years, will be self-employed. And if you're the accountant that said, I want no part of that, then that's going to be a dangerous place to be at some point. Right. So we're trying to, again, lower that barrier, to your point, using automation. And then now we have the whole gig economy thing, which is a whole different class of self-employed that's yep. growing at an astronomical rate. It is, and if you just think about you know, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, you know, it's interesting, I uh, until recently was working for the last three years in the UK. A fascinating stat there that's just a couple of weeks old is in London alone, there are now 70,000 Uber drivers, 7-0, 70,000. Mm. There are 20,000 black cabs. So if you've ever been to London and you've seen how many black cabs there are, there's now more than three times as many Uber drivers. And then you think many of these folks are needing to file a tax return for the first time. They're needing to separate their business and personal expenses for the first time. And so a product like QuickBooks Self-Employed, which costs less than $10 a month, helps them do those two things. And so that's where we've seen a tremendous amount of uh, uptake. I, you've touched on this already, but but you just said something that made me take another bite of the apple here. Uh, you talked about we're going to do things differently, right? We want accountants to do things differently, and I started thinking, well, I, the accountants I know they don't do things differently. They <laughs> they they that's just not how they're wired. You know, they've got gap and they stick to it, and that's it. So uh, ultimately, your your mission is to make people go against their inherent nature and convince them that it's really good for them. Yes. Yes, and uh, it's, it's, it, it does sound <laughs> like a tall order when, when you put it like that. Yes. No, and I'll give you, uh, we, we actually, it was fun to be on stage yesterday recognizing what we call our firm of the future. So, so we recently ran a contest, a global contest, where um, we had thousands of entries, firms of accountants, who we're encouraging to make these steps, to do exactly this, to get out of their comfort zone and sort of move into this new place. And we recognized there's a lady called Karen, who uh, her company's called 24 Hour Bookkeeper, and she was the overall winner. And she sat on stage and we did a, a little Q&A like this, and she talked about how she has literally fired clients in the last 12 months who wouldn't move to the cloud with her. Mm. And she said, I simply am unable to support you anymore if you want to be a desktop client. And she said uh, she's fired clients who, who, who essentially have been unwilling to accept what she calls value billing. And so she's moved her entire practice from an hourly billing rate where she herself said there's every month she has clients where she feels bad because she's literally spent six or seven hours on a client, but she doesn't want to bill them that amount because she knows that the turnover of that business is relatively small. And she's moved all of that to a value billing where she has three prices. There's sort of a, a low, medium, high. So different levels of service. Exactly, right. and someone can choose to pay, you know, whether it's $150 a month or maybe it's $600 a month at the top, and they understand what they're getting. And it's less time and it's more sort of a package of services. And so she talked about how you know, she was in a place three years ago where she didn't understand this, and now she's in a place where she sort of sets these guidelines, and some clients like it and some don't, most do, and her practice is now in a very different place, and her clients are more successful than ever. And she's much more efficient with her time, the clients are getting their money's worth out of it, but you've got to convince them too. It, we, the exactly, time. and it's a, it's a process, uh, yeah. and I, it's a process where we always have to educate, obviously, on the benefits, and so it's less about what we do and more about the benefits to the accountant and the small business, but we seem to be winning that battle over time. Well, good things happening at Intuit, no doubt about that. Uh, Rich, we certainly do appreciate the time. Wish you all the best, and congratulations on the show here, by the way. It's just good energy, um, upbeat, positive, and uh, blue skies ahead. So. Good job on that front. Well, thank you, really appreciate the time. Thank you guys. You Thanks, thank Richard. you, Rich Priest from Intuit joining us here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage from San Jose right after this.